In response to Executive Order 9066, all Americans of Japanese descent must report to relocation centers. By Dwight Okita. Dear sirs, of course I'll come. I've packed my galoshes and three packets of tomato seeds. Denise calls them love apples. My father says where we're going, they won't grow. I am a 14-year-old girl with bad spelling and a messy room. If it helps any, I will tell you I have always felt funny using chopsticks, and my favorite food is hot dogs. My best friend is a white girl named Denise. We look at boys together. She sat in front of me all through grade school because of our names. O'Connor, Ozawa. I know the back of Denise's head very well. I tell her she's going bald. She tells me I copy on tests. We're best friends. I saw Denise today in geography class. She was sitting on the other side of the room. You're trying to start a war, she said, giving secrets away to the enemy. Why can't you keep your big mouth shut? I didn't know what to say. I gave her a packet of tomato seeds and asked her to plant them for me. Told her when the first tomato ripened, she'd miss me. So, uh, as she said, that is that was in response to Executive Order 9066 by Dwight Okita. And in case you didn't know, that poem was written by an adult man. Even though it said she's a 14-year-old girl. What's going on there? It's a persona poem. Um, and it's what, we, we, it's what we'll be working on today. Um, it's the kind of poetry where you take a perspective um, and you write a poem from that person or thing's perspective. Um, generally, people will write them from perspectives that are not their own, but it, I think it's fine some, to write from your own perspective if you wanted to, but I encourage you, strongly encourage you, to choose to write a poem about a different perspective. So, today, as always, if you're watching this video, you've listened to that poem, what's going to follow is I'm going to work out some definitions, then we're going to dive deeper into that poem, listen to it again, get some context, try and understand it, um, and then once you finish this video, you want to go to Google Classroom, hopefully you probably already are there, read all the poems attached, um, and then choose one of them for further analysis, answer the questions on the document, and write your own persona poem. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Before we move into a further analysis of this, this poem, um, there are some definitions we need to talk about, and honestly I'll tell you the definitions are pretty easy today. They're really just more of an explanation of what this style of poem is, because I just want to be clear. So, first definition, persona poem. A persona poem is a poem written from a unique perspective, normally different from the poet's. So, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but in case it's not, perspective is a point of view or a particular way of looking at something. So, you could have the point of view uh, or from the perspective of a frog, or you could write something from the perspective of a book, or... Like, I'm a, I'm a gun. like you're a gun. You could write a poem from the perspective of a gun. And in fact, that's one of the poems that I've attached today by Nas. Um, so, again, a persona poem is just writing a poem from a different point of view. Um, so, write a persona poem. After this video, uh, choose something. Choose something. Choose someone. Um, a relative. Uh, somebody you know. Somebody you don't know. Um, a Lego, a desk, um, your bed. Just choose something. Write a poem from that direct, from that thing's perspective, and, and try and think about what you could bring out from that. So, um, let's move on to examining that poem in more detail, shall we? This poem, however, and before we get to, we need to read it. And before we read it, there's some uh, historical context. I think you want to make sure you understand. So this poem is referring to the internment of Japanese Americans. This happened. Um, from February 19th, 1942 to March 20th, 1946, basically all throughout World War II when the United States got involved. The United States did this because they were afraid that all Japanese people would become spies uh, for Japan. Um, it was a racist assumption. It relied on a lot of just bad information and just really terrible thinking. And it was well, what happened was that basically 120,000 people of Japanese ancestry on the West Coast were forced to relocate and they were incarcerated, which means imprisoned, in concentration camps. So American citizens who just who were Japanese 
were taken from their homes. They, they, a ton of them lost their property, lost their farms, lost their businesses, and they were put in concentration camps where they were watched over, barbed wire, machine guns, all of that. The concentration camps were not as bad, I want to be clear about, as, as the German concentration camps, but they're still concentration camps. They were still being held against their will for no reason other than racist thinking. So it was a pretty horrific event. The United States has come to apologize and has tried to do a kind of reparations for it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it was a, it was a horrific moment in our history. And this poem um, addresses that. Uh, it, it tries to address that. So, I'm going to play it again. Hopefully you understand that more context uh, of what exactly they meant when Executive Order 9066 and what's going on. This is talking about a real event that really happened in the United States. And it was horrible. And it's told from the perspective of a 14-year-old girl. So, here it is again, the poem. In response to Executive Order 9066, all Americans of Japanese descent must report to relocation centers. By Dwight Okita. Dear sirs, of course I'll come. I've packed my galoshes and three packets of tomato seeds. Denise calls them love apples. My father says where we're going, they won't grow. I am a 14-year-old girl with bad spelling and a messy room. If it helps any, I will tell you I have always felt funny using chopsticks, and my favorite food is hot dogs. My best friend is a white girl named Denise. We look at boys together. She sat in front of me all through grade school because of our names. O'Connor, Ozawa. I know the back of Denise's head very well. I tell her she's going bald. She tells me I copy on tests. We're best friends. I saw Denise today in geography class. She was sitting on the other side of the room. You're trying to start a war, she said, giving secrets away to the enemy. Why can't you keep your big mouth shut? I didn't know what to say. I gave her a packet of tomato seeds and asked her to plant them for me. Told her when the first tomato ripened, she'd miss me. So that's this poem in response to Executive Order 9066 by Dwight Okita. Um, and let's try to do a bit of analysis here. Um, so the first place I start, of course, is the beginning. Um, and the beginning of this poem is in the title. In response to Executive Order 9066. It's in response. This poem is in response to that order that was sent out. Um, and what's the response? It's a letter. Dear sirs. That tells you it's a letter. Um, and then her next line. Of course I'll come. This line is the first of many that for me begins to expose the innocence and the youth of of this character, this person who, in reality, I believe it's Dwight Okita's grandmother. That's my understanding, I believe. Either grandmother or mother. I think it's grandmother. So, he p tries to take her perspective, her persona. And he says, of course I'll come. But like I said, this is not an invitation that the United States government sent out. This was a forced relocation. Her saying, of course I'll come, is a moot point because she has to come. Um, but again, he's showing like that in a certain sense, maybe she's not understanding exactly what's going on here. Um, which, again, I can't blame her for feeling that way. Because she's a 14-year-old girl with bad spelling in a messy room. She's, in other words, just like a lot of you guys. Sorry, I'm sure. Although, based on some of her Zoom calls, you guys have pretty nice rooms. Um, a 14-year-old girl with bad spelling in a messy room. So, again, the author's immediately drawn this into her youth, her innocence. She talks about how she's packed her galoshes, which are like boots for walking in rain and she's packed three packets of tomato seeds just it's 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 childish um and again this childish person this 14 year old girl with bad spelling in the messy room is as we saw later in the poem apparently trying to start a war and giving seeks to the enemy and so this contrast is is what Dwight Okita is trying to show that this was a 14 year old girl she she wasn't doing those things so what was really going on um, it continues, and she says, um, she kind of like has to defend her Americanness. She, she has to divorce herself from her Asianness. I always felt funny using chopsticks, and she's trying to defend, say like, I'm an American. My favorite food is hot dogs. And, and again, the fact that you have to do that, divorce yourself from from part of your identity, and and pro like push out this other part is it's wrong. It's wrong that she was made to do this in this letter. I know it's fictional, but still, this this perspective it it shows like how what was done to this girl was really wrong. Um, her experience, okay, is another thing I want to focus on. Um, her best friend, right here, Denise, who she's with, together with, they do things together, 
See, they know each other very well. They are best friends. This same person, Denise, attacks her. She's sitting on the other side of the room all of a sudden. They used to be together, but now she's on the other side of the room. And she says, you're this little 14-year-old girl. You're trying to start a war, she says, and giving secrets away to the enemy. So we see here that Denise doesn't understand. She, she thinks it's like an invitation up here. Of course I'll come. But her friend also is just, <laughs> also possibly just misunderstanding too. She's, she's, she's buying into the rhetoric and, and the racist propaganda she's heard. And she's now turning her best friend into the enemy. Um, and so it really shows how propaganda, things like this can really change, change people. And, and little girls, unfortunately, like Denise, are very impressionable. And by the way, I keep on making mentioning race and racism, and I think that's critically important to this poem. And I think the author draws attention to it at several points. One of them was the fact that she calls her a white girl named Denise. Um, she draws attention to race, and I think that's for a reason. Um, the final thing I'd focus on this poem, and it's the tomato seed metaphor. So... She talks right here about the three packets of tomato seeds, um, and she calls them love apples. So these tomato seeds are kind of love. Um, and then here her father says, they won't grow where they're going. And so in other words, at this concentration camp that they're going to be imprisoned at, love is not going to grow. It's going to die. That's just, again, showing the stark reality of it. But at the end, that's not what the poem ends on. Like many of the poems we've been reading, they don't focus on these dark, evil places. They try to find hope. And so in response to her friend racially attacking her, um, she says, I didn't know what to say. And she gives her gifts. She gave her a packet of tomato seeds and she asked her to plant them for me. And then she says I, that she told her when the first one ripened, she'd miss me. So the poem ends on this moment of hope. The tomato seeds are a symbol of love. And they're also a symbol of hope, that in the end, this friend, Denise, she'd remember that they were together, that they knew each other very well, that they were best friends, and she'd remember she's not her enemy, and she's not trying to start a war, and she would miss her, she would love her, and she would hopefully hope that she'd come back. So... That's what I'm getting from this poem. It's in response to Executive Order 9066. All Americans of Japanese descent must report to relocation centers by Dwight Okita. It's a powerful poem, and it's told from a perspective of somebody that is not the writer. Dwight Okita is, is not a 14-year-old girl. Um, but he put himself in this perspective to bring to light a serious problem and a serious issue and something that really affected his family and many other families. So, you've watched this video. Um, now read the other poems. Uh, you've done it again. So list, read the other poems, listen to them. One of them, the one that's a video, was written by a high school student just like you. And I think it's honestly maybe the best. So once you've done that, analyze one of them in particular, and then write your own persona poem. Find a u unique perspective, maybe something that you want to bring out, maybe something you just want to do for fun. Do whatever you want. It's a persona poem. I look forward to reading, the, I look forward to reading your poems. Have a great week.